The steam cylinder on this engine was a mess. Someone had drilled a hole right the way through the middle of it to put an oiler in the middle of the cylinder, which would be fine if it was using cast iron piston rings, but this engine was built and designed to use soft packings, or graphited yarn as it's known. So there was never a satisfactory piston seal. This is the oiler in question. It's not really required in the middle of a steam cylinder, but you can see how wide the thread is. Quite a big hole is that in the cylinder. There were a few choices which would be the best road to take on this repair. I chose to sleeve the cylinder. I could have used cast iron piston rings, but as the cylinder was bored to a non-specific size, getting the right size piston rings was always going to be a problem. I could of course make the piston rings, which is not difficult to do, I've done it before, but then I would have had to make a new special piston that split into two. So it was a far simpler thing to sleeve the cylinder. I machined the cast iron liner from the solid, and then machined the ends in the milling machine to extend the steam ports. Then I also machined a groove halfway down the top side of the liner on the outside, which allows the oil to travel from the lubricator on top of the cylinder into the cylinder should it be needed. The original diameter of the cylinder bore was just over 2 inches, 2 and 3 sixteenths approximately. My liner has an internal diameter of an inch and 3 quarters, which allowed me to use the existing piston, which was made of nice stainless steel, and turn it down to suit. Then I grooved it for an o-ring, and this is the result. Now to test the piston. Firstly I need a compressed air supply, and I don't need very much compressed air, this is hardly any at all. I need to test how the piston works. So I'm connecting my air line to the cylinder. This air pressure is extremely low, and all I need to do is pull out the valve spindle, and the piston should move accordingly. With very little pressure, this is hardly anything at all, not even registering on the gauge. And as you can see, the piston moves in and out very slowly and very smoothly. There are absolutely no leaks on this O-ring. O-rings are great if you fit them properly, they really will seal a cylinder for quite a long time. But it's vital that with a soft packing, like graphited yarn or an O-ring, the O-ring or graphited yarn does not pass over any rough edges, otherwise it just gets destroyed by being planed off by the sharp edge. This liner was fitted into the cylinder just using Loctite 603, and it's also held in place by the cylinder covers when they're bolted up to the cylinder. This clip shows me removing the brass banding around the cylinder cladding. The cylinder cladding is some very old mahogany or some similar wood, but it needs to be cleaned up. Originally when this was fitted I don't think they did a very good job on it really. It's not very even, so what I'm going to do is sand it down. But this wood will be old and oily, so I think I'm going to have problems. Here you can see exactly how uneven the wood is. It needs to be improved upon this I think. So I'm going to spend some time with the sander and some sandpaper and maybe even my razor plane to reshape this cladding. When doing a renovation and repair on a vintage engine, I do like to be sympathetic to the state of the thing. But if the parts were badly fitted in the first place, then really I can't deal with that. I have to make sure that it looks good. Here I'm using my orbital sander to clean up the outside of the cladding. But I'm struggling with this the cladding is very oil soaked and it's clogging up the sander. So I'll help it along by hand with some very coarse sandpaper. But the best way to do it is to try and leach some of the oil out with some cellulose thinners. In any case I would be using cellulose thinners to remove the paint. Unfortunately I've nearly run out of the stuff and I need a lot more. I'll get some more next week. Looking at this I may need to use my razor plane to tidy up this cladding. Removing one of the planks you can see how thick they are. And when I put the planks back together on the cylinder, I will be using some cyanoacrylate adhesive to hold them in place, and not just rely on the brass bands. But I'll put the piece back for now until I get some more thinners. Thanks for watching, I hope this has been useful to you.